Hello, welcome back to the SMMP Reviews YouTube channel. My name is Brittany, I'm a nurse practitioner with SMMP Reviews, and today we're going to be talking about hypertension guidelines. Specifically, we're going to review the differences between the JNC-8 and the American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association guidelines. There are some differences between these guidelines, but the principles behind them are the same. It's just about getting maximum benefit for patient care. Practice guidelines are ever-changing, so it's important to follow along and be aware of those changes so we can offer the most recent evidence-based care for our patients. Now, I want to note here that the certification exams are transitioning to using the ACC AHA guidelines, so keep that in mind. However, you may see JNC-8 in practice, so it's good to know both. Don't worry though, the exams will make it clear in the question which guidelines they are using so you can be confident in answering those questions. Let's start off with some background on these guidelines. First of all, what is the JNC? This is the Joint National Committee. This committee notes the high impact of elevated blood pressure and publishes evidence-based guidelines on prevention, diagnosis, and management of hypertension. The most recent guidelines that this committee has published are known as the JNC-8 guidelines, which were published about 10 years ago. The JNC-8 guidelines apply to those who are 18 years or older. Do you know what blood pressure measurement is considered hypertension under these guidelines? Hypertension is diagnosed with a blood pressure of 140 over 90 or greater. The recommendation suggests beginning pharmacological treatment for those who are 60 years old or older when blood pressure increases to greater than or equal to 150 over 90. Patients younger than 60 years old should have treatment initiated with blood pressure of greater than or equal to 140 over 90, as well as patients who have a diagnosis of chronic kidney disease or diabetes. What is our treatment goal under the JNC-8 guidelines? The goal is to decrease the blood pressure to below 140 over 90. The other guidelines we are going to review today are the American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association guidelines, known as the ACC AHA for short. These guidelines are definitely considered the stricter of the two guidelines, and since the exams are moving in this direction and these are a little more recent of the two guidelines, we're going to spend some more time with these. Under the ACC AHA guidelines, normal blood pressure is anything below 120 over 80. Do you know the threshold for an elevated blood pressure according to these guidelines? Elevated blood pressure is defined as a systolic blood pressure of 120 to 129 and a diastolic blood pressure of less than 80. So what blood pressure readings qualify as hypertension diagnosis under these guidelines? Stage one hypertension is defined as systolic blood pressure of 130 to 139 or a diastolic blood pressure of 80 to 89. What about stage two? Stage two hypertension is anything greater than or equal to 140 systolic or greater than or equal to 90 diastolic. And remember a hypertension diagnosis requires at least two readings on two separate occasions. Okay, for an elevated blood pressure, without a formal hypertension diagnosis, we can typically start with lifestyle modifications. What modifications could we suggest to our patients? We could encourage them to initiate a low sodium diet, exercise, weight loss, smoking cessation, or limiting alcohol intake. And then we could reassess in three to six months. Once a patient reaches stage one hypertension, we can also trial lifestyle modifications as treatment as long as the patient does not have any other cardiovascular risk factors. And if the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or ASCVD risk score is less than 10%. If these lifestyle modifications have not been successful within three to six months, what would be our next step? At this point, we should really consider starting the patient on medication to assist in lowering blood pressure to goal range. Now, there are a couple of exceptions here. If the patient has stage one hypertension and an ASCVD risk score of greater than 10 or a clinical diagnosis of cardiovascular disease, they should be started on medication even at stage one. 
Now, do you remember what is considered stage two hypertension? That is anything greater than or equal to 140 systolic or 90 diastolic. And how would we proceed in this, in this case? This is where we would want to start medication right away. Now, we always want to encourage those lifestyle modifications that we discussed in the previous slide. However, that is not sufficient for blood pressure control in stage two. After beginning medication, what do we need, when do we need to reassess? We want to reassess about one month after starting medication. That way we can assess how the patient is taking the medication as well as how it's working. If the blood pressure is at goal at that one month mark, we can assess again in three to six months. What is the blood pressure reading here? What goal are we looking for? Under the ACC AHA guidelines, we want to see that blood pressure decrease to less than 130 over 80. Keep that in mind, that's one of the big differences between those guidelines. This goal is a little more strict than the JNC-8. If the goal is not met at the one month mark, we can assess medication adherence, increase the dose, or add a second medication. So let's walk through a patient scenario to really apply these guidelines. Our patient is 62 years old, and they came in today for an annual physical exam. The initial blood pressure measurement today was 138 over 88, and the recheck was 134 over 86. When looking back through the patient's visit notes, the nurse practitioner notices that the patient had a blood pressure in this range at the last visit. Let's pause here for a second. What category does this patient fall under according to the ACC AHA guidelines? According to these guidelines, this patient falls under stage one hypertension. So what are the next steps we could pursue in this patient's care plan? Let's think back to our options. For stage one, we would definitely encourage those lifestyle modifications at this point. So weight loss, exercise, healthy diet, smoking cessation, and limiting alcohol consumption. Now, what are some really important factors we need to consider when initiating a treatment plan for this patient? We need to know about his ASCVD risk. Remember, if a patient has a diagnosis of cardiovascular disease, or if they have an ASCVD risk score of greater than 10%, we need to start blood pressure medication even with stage one hypertension. Okay, let's continue our scenario here with a practice question. A 62-year-old patient presents to the clinic for a three-month follow-up after being diagnosed with stage one hypertension with an ASCVD risk score of 7%. The patient has been implementing exercise and diet changes since the last visit, and the blood pressure reading today is 138 over 86. According to the ACC AHA guidelines, what changes should the nurse practitioner make to the treatment plan? So we've got a few options here. We've got A, advise further dietary changes. B, encourage more exercise and assisted weight loss. C, no changes, continue with the current plan. Or D, start a blood pressure medication. What do you think should be the next step in the treatment plan for this patient? Okay, I want to point out that this question states which guidelines we're using in answering the question. This is what will happen on your exam, so it's good to know both, but the exam will make it clear what guidelines are being followed. What do we remember about the ACC AHA guidelines? What do they say about treating stage one hypertension? So this patient has already been seen and is following up after trying lifestyle modifications. The blood pressure reading remains in stage one range. So according to the guidelines, we should initiate medication since the lifestyle modifications have not been sufficient to get the blood pressure to, to goal. So the answer to this question is D, start a blood pressure medication. Now bonus question, what is the treatment goal we're working toward under these guidelines? We wanna see a blood pressure of less than 130 over 80. So the other options would not be sufficient alone to bring the blood pressure to our goal. Hypertension is one of the most common health issues we will see in our adult patients. The good news is the guidelines are pretty straightforward. Staying up to date on those re most recent guidelines can assure that we give our patients the best care possible. Thank you so much for joining us here at SMMP Reviews. Please come back again for our most recent videos.